Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our next installment of 20 Minutes for Israel from Israel, where we take 20 minutes to connect not just to what's going on in Israel, but to the people, to the faces, to the experiences, to the mood of what's happening in Israel. This afternoon, we're joined by Ora Schreier, who is a educator on the uh, seminary scene in Israel, um, a distinguished educator who made Aliyah just a couple years ago from America, um, who's based in Jerusalem, or are you live in Jerusalem now? Ramat Beit Shemesh. Yeah. Ramat Beit Shemesh. Um, and uh, Ora, thank you for taking some time. We really appreciate you being with us. Uh, can you just sure. tell us yourself, you, you know, how your family's doing? You came from, you made Aliyah a couple years ago. Sure. Um, this is such a nice program. Um, we live in Ramat Beit Shemesh. We moved from Washington Heights. My husband and I are both from small Jewish communities, Muncie and Woodmere, um, in New York. Um, and we lived in Washington Heights. My husband was in YU, taught in Teaneck and Mayudo for many years, and then we moved to Israel. So we live in Ramat Shemesh. We have four little kids, um, seven and under. Um, yeah, Ramat Shemesh is um, not, we had as a quote from Chastora. We've had a few cents, and there are many people here um, with family members, husbands, fathers, brothers, and Yiluim who are serving right now. Um, and there's also a lot of families here from the north and south that we're um, very busy with. But from a day-to-day -day safety perspective where we live, um, it's like a Bar Hashem, not so, uh, not, not much going on, thank God. Um, so a lot of the, uh, how people are doing here is people whose kids are particularly um, impacted by having sirens and switching schools. Um, my kids are in like scattered in a few different schools. They go to school in caravans usually. Um, and those caravans don't have a mama, they don't have a bomb shelter. So there's one of like, they're all in different schools, like around uh, the Chamesh. But again, that's like a logistical challenge. And then depending on your kid, that's an emotional challenge for them and the kind of feeling like things are a little off. Um, and then obviously there's a, a lot of people whose husbands are Miluem, who's, um, or generally off schedule, go to Abba, he's over there, um, whose husbands are new and, and um, family members are shifted that way. Um, but in terms of the day to day living, it's it's not obviously, thank God, like some of the other struggles people are having in the country. It's just part of being this bigger sense of like we're here and there's a war, but it's day to day. We're also very, very much living our lives. So I think there are a number of points of intersection where you get a sense of what's going on both in the Israeli culture um, and also on the Shana Aleph, the first year gap year scene. Um, but before I dive into that, um, I understand today you went to the funeral for Rose, who was a IDF uh, police, border police officer who was murdered in a terrorist attack um, a couple of days ago. Can you tell us a little about what, what, you know, what was that like? What, what, you know, about the funeral, about Rose? Um, sure. My, I have a neighbor who was her counselor um, in Camp Megillah years ago. So we went together and she was, I think, one of the few people there who actually knew her. There were, a, I don't know numbers. It was, it was a, a very, very, very large number of people were there. Um, just in the going, what really struck us both is like, there were so many people going um, who you almost got the sense like this is what they do. Like they show up for these kinds of things. Like Israelis don't speak English. I don't think they know anyone from Atlanta, like just really showing up. It's actually interesting. Um, I, Rabbi Brander's mother, for many of you who may know this, is a very special woman who I know from growing up. And she's actually reached out to me a few times about how I'm doing it. She actually did last night. And I was just talking about what I'm, you know, doing in here in my family. And she mentioned that her and her husband have been going to a lot of funerals and um, civil homes. And that's not something that I, the things we've been involved in haven't been those things. And she, we just sort of reflected on, you know, different people at different stages of life have like ways of contributing in different, there's an endless number of things you can do when you're here to be contributing. And, um, and it was just, it really felt like there are people who like, they show up for lone soldiers. And it was very, very powerful, even just the walking to the funeral before hearing anything about her. Um, it, it's really remarkable. I, I don't, you, you, the, the things they're saying about her and what they were talking about, it really sounds like just, she was just like an unbelievable person and it's almost like like is it just unbelievable people like the people you wouldn't 
like really mind-boggling and something we were walking away with as we were walking back was just this intense sense that came across of um of her authenticity and that her authenticity true to herself they're giving examples about how she always had a different color hair and her outfits were always different and she like interesting like just very out of the box and um my friend said she remembered as her counselor even when she was like 12 years old in camp that she she was the kid that would always like deal with social drama among you know middle school girls and it's interesting because when you're very secure in who you are as yourself and your values you can kind of have that confidence to help other people so that really came across and her love for the Jewish people and the state of Israel is just I think there's something about Israelis seeing what Americans think um I remember when we meet Aliyah the flight attendant the Israeli flight attendant on LL I was like why would you leave New York and I was like now is not the time to ask this but there's this sense that you really feel that the Israelis who come I felt this particularly, there were a lot of um, people, part of the the um, police officers and, and like uh, military personnel who were there, young people. And and even like in their comments, you just saw that there was a sense of like awe and someone to have such a clear sense of mission and values and purpose to like specifically want to go and protect and her specifically to go to the old city and want to protect you, shall I am. And people are sort of like, they don't even know what to do with that kind of commitment. Um, and and the seminary, a bunch of seminaries went, and but I was very moved by a lot of the Israelis, honestly, that that they they're like, you're one of us, she's one of ours, and they literally, I don't think, speak any English. Some of these people, you could tell that they kind of didn't understand everything that was being said, but it was sort of like she's ours, and it was it was very very powerful. I can only imagine. Um, Rose was twenty from Atlanta. Um, you know, as we think about the broader picture and uh, everything that the, the Jewish people, the Israeli population has endured over the last, you know, three, four weeks, um, are there moments that sort of stick out for you in this, uh, in the unfoldings of vignettes, either about Israeli society, about the sadness or the resilience? Um. There's a moment that stands out for me it's that um, happened earlier. There's a few. Well, I'll say a, a nice one. I'll say, well, I'll just say today, like the, I had to call the tax authority and they are so nice right now on the phone. <laughs> she was just so kind. The woman is she's saying we should hear good news and she was so patient with me. And it's not, there's just this sense of like, I, I, that I can't really put into words. It just struck me today, like with my 15 minutes on the phone with the tax authority, they never call you to help. Like that's not part of what happens anyway. But on a more serious note, the, the moment where I think I really got the sense of like what it means to be here. Um, at the beginning, um, in those first, the first week or in two weeks, the, there was like no school and everyone was home. And the community WhatsApp groups where I live especially were like exploding with things you could do at all times. Like a list of things you could donate, things you could bring. People need this. People are here. They need this size clothes, this size, this, at like just all so many things. Um, and a lot of like, I'm a mom of young kids. So a lot of us were very much involved in just our own families and, and making sure our children felt okay to the extent that they could and really monitoring what they were hearing and who they were hearing it from. And there was this, this day where someone posted on a chat, I need size 10 month boys pajamas for twins. And I like saw it. And then there were mi- literally 50 messages. If I put down my phone, there were 50 more. And then I picked up my phone later in the day and it said like, still need more um, clothes for, for this age. And I have a baby, thank God, who, who's, um, he had just turned a year at the time. And I had just gone through his clothes. Um, I have a few boys in a row. So I was like very aware of what I needed and what I didn't. And I was like, I really have this in my house and my kids are fine. And we can go up to where I keep my clothes and go through them. And we went through the clothes and we took out the, the clothes that were right. And it's my neighbor two door two um, blocks down. And she's like been the mayor of taking care of everyone. And I like, her whole house is taking care of million things and my whole house is just like my family and this friend and that friend and not this whole thing but I went over and I gave her the the pajamas and the clothes for the babies and said oh my gosh thank you and she also needed like and three tea for this kid it's literally like the kid on the list I'm like okay we have a little three tea fine but I as I was like bringing them over I was talking to someone from America who was checking in which is like such a sweet thing like I'm never not the I'm okay and she was checking in it really meant a lot and I thought of her because she has a bunch of boys and we've like before talked about what we keep, what we don't keep of baby clothes. And I said like, oh, I'm just shopping off clothes. I was just thinking of you. And she said, it's for the twins. And I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. 
And she said, and like I kept going and whatever. And then later she was saying there were these, there was these twin babies. There was a story about these twin babies whose parents had, had been killed and they had saved their, their children from one of the kibbutzim. And she was saying like, as a new story, it really stuck with her. She's like, I keep thinking about these babies. And it struck me that I didn't, I didn't know about them. Like, I didn't know, I didn't know the story. I hadn't read that piece. We try to be like with news, we have to be very careful here what we're looking at. We want to be sensitive. We want to know the stories, but we also have to like be able to live and figure out the balance. And it really struck me that, that I like, I was able to bring clues that are going to their aunts. Like it's going to, and I'm not doing a lot of things, but like that sense of like, I'm here and I'm giving you my things and like, it's going to their aunts and, and the sense that she would give as much money as she possibly could, but there's something that like they need pajamas right now. And I have pajamas, I'm giving them. And like, it just really struck me this like chain of, of connection. And, and this friend in America wants to be connected also and in a beautiful way, but it just really struck me. It's like, I'm just here so I can do this. And that was just very powerful. And I'll just say one more really beautiful. Um, I work at Aisha's, one of the seminaries I work at. I also work at Shalavim for women and I work at Ish and they made a bat mitzvah for a young girl from Miss Tibot who couldn't have her bat mitzvah because the hall where it was supposed to be was, it was a racket on the hall and everyone, many people from her community aren't there right now and they all had moved in. They met this girl by accident and a staff member and they're like, we're going to make your bat mitzvah. Like on the spot, they didn't ask the administrators, they didn't ask for permission. Like we have to make your bat mitzvah and they did it. They put the whole thing together. And I brought my daughter to her bat mitzvah and to see this, this girl dancing with these American girls made this beautiful, beautiful Anissa and with her own mother and grandmother. And you could see in some of the songs everyone's playing now about um, and we're not afraid, we have Hashem. There's even a line, we have a strong army and we have Hashem. And like, they're all dancing for this Bat with this girl. And she has a huge amount of faith and confidence and she taught them to dance at her mom, you could tell is just Chazak, like this strong person. Um, and that was like incredibly moving. Like I felt like in the midst of all of this, like this is this is what we fight for. Like this is what we we really represent. And it was just a beautiful coming together of the girls making this for her and her being a part of it. And even just seeing her mother and her grandma and the continuity of the generations and the confidence that that this is a bump in a very long road, which was just very, very powerful to see. Unbelievable. Just uh, the presence, the power of presence of being in the moment, being able to help people. Um, what are you seeing on sort of the gap year scene um, and sort of the sentiment, the feeling among the students? Um, there's a lot of talk about girls who stayed and, um, and people really do have reasons for why parents brought children home. And, I'm, and I think it's an important disclaimer. Um, and, and then the, I think that, you know, people bigger than me have to be more careful. So I think I could be a little less careful. The, the people who stayed, I think that it's it's really a very strong feeling of like, we're a part of something. Um, and again, people who are not there for one reason, another can be part of things in different ways, but there's a sense of like, we're here and, and it shows that we're here. I'll just give you a quick story. The, in Shalavin, there's someone who works in the kitchen in Israeli. I don't think he speaks any English. Um, and he was just talking about like people staying and like what that means to people here, um, that, that this is where we should be. And more than that, what's happening now is a lot of people's parents are coming. And just the chizik that that gives, at the beginning it was the, there were show rabbis who came and there were school principals who came. And again, not everyone can come with their schedules and it's, no one really cares which school are you from, which school are you from? It's just a sense of people coming. Um, and I think the girls who are here really feel like they're part of Amistral in a way it's hard to do when you're far away. I think um, I heard Rav Weinberger talk about this, Rav Moshe Weinberger from Woodmere, it was just this powerful point of everyone's feeling things, but the way you, you put it based on something you had heard from one of the congregants who was in Israel, he said in Israel, they're like one beating heart and everyone's like together. And he said, it's, it's just that in America, everyone feels like one broken heart. That's what he was saying. And, and I think we were trying, we wanna, everyone should feel part of the beating heart piece. And it's just harder when you're, when you're not here, but I think they're there. That's like kind of the goal is to, is to move kind of beyond that pain to the uh, beyond, but at the same time to also be part of this, this moment for the, for the Jewish people, like what it feels like here is not, I mean, it's, it's, it's not, it's not a normal, like, yeah, it's, it's this, this sense of everyone at all times there's what to do. And even, even small things, like even, even, helping neighbors with like if I asked right now I was giving this example to someone if I asked for a sweet potato right now 12 neighbors would offer me a sweet potato and not just because I have good neighbors 
two months ago, like five people would offer me a sweet potato, but there's like, can I give you anything? Can I help you with anything? Do you need something? Do you want me to take all your kids? Do you want me to do? And not even only for people, for people whose husbands are new and people who, whose sons are fighting even more so, but, but even like in the Olim community in which I live, where there's not as many people like that, there's this overwhelming sense of like, like being biachad, which is really powerful. And we, we want to include all of everyone in that. Um, unbelievable. Um, where well, our time, as, as I shared with you in the in 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 preparation for this, it's a very short twenty minutes. Um, you're talking to a group of American Jews who obviously care deeply about Israel. What do you think we need to know here? What message you want to pass back to us, and that we can continue to share uh, here? Uh, that's very big, but uh, very small in terms of that. I think, I think it means a lot to people when it feels like people are, are, are with them. Like whether it's a family, whether it's someone whose family, you know, their family members in Milan, whether it's just people who live here. And at first, I was getting messages from people. We we worked in a, a lovely show in Carolina, and a few people there before we moved here, and a few people that were reaching out to me, like, why are you reaching out to me? Like, I don't live in the south, I don't live in the north, and I was like there's this real sense of like, cause we're with you. We're with you in your struggle that you can't buy milk right now for your baby because there's all these kinds of shortages and all the WhatsApps are like, where can you find, we have milk now, but like, where can you find milk? That's fine. Like that is literally a zero issue in comparison to what's going on. But these little like being together, I think means a lot. I also think I hear people talking about, you know, when, when they hear people saying, you know, we're, we're going to switch our winter break plans and we're coming to Israel instead, or we're not even switch them because it's not in the cards to go to Israel for whatever reason, but like we were going to do X for Thanksgiving break. And instead we're going to be doing Y because it's not, it's not appropriate during what's going on to be living life as normal. I think it's hard because it's not this, you know, part of what we do as Jews is we continue and we live. And that's our biggest way of defeating our enemies is, is living our Jewish lives. But I think at this time there is what to be said for also having something in our day that looks like we're we're with them. I think most people do. I, I just think that when we hear about it, it really means it means a lot. Like the I stop every day at this time and I do this, or I I don't know. I, obviously donating and and lobbying and the march next week and all of that means a tremendous amount. But I think just just I, it's not like a friend even just mentioned like yeah we're doing this like I, I tell my children in the morning and we say this part of them in the morning with my kids. Just hearing about that is like. Because you're with, you're, we're all with us. The same way that we are, we're not the people people need to be with. We need to be with the other people. Even you know, like there's this chain of like, of calling yourself the Jewish people. That um, I think I think everyone's checked into that. I think communicating the ways in which you're checked into that and and plugged into that is very powerful for, for like this being part of this one heart. I think it's so important what you just said. That one tangible thing that we can do and finding ways to share that in Israel. Uh, very much like this 20 minutes for Israel from Israel. Um, 100%. It's beautiful. It's such a beautiful thing. To, I, like, I didn't know this existed. And, you know, I'm in my own little world. And I'm like, that's so beautiful. Like, 20 minutes a day. This is my, like, this is where my heart is. Beautiful. Well, I think that 20 minutes a day shows us that this is where our heart is all the time. Um, Ora, thank you so much for your time tonight um, and taking time from being with your kids. Um, stay safe and keep up the wonderful and very important, meaningful work. Again, just the power of presence. Uh, for everyone else, this is the last one for this week. We'll continue on Monday. We have Alyssa Friedman, um, who's a medical uh, a medical physician down south, uh, former resident of West Hartford, to share us a little bit what's going on uh, there. Um, just to note that Tuesday, the, the 14th, we will not be having a regular 20 minutes from Israel for Israel. I will try to log in from the rally, uh, but we won't be having a regular one. I highly encourage everyone who's here and listening to try to come. Federation is sending buses. Uh, you can sign up till Friday um, and to join us um, and just to help make our voice be heard um, and be present there. Um, there is some conversation about a micro mission to Israel in the weeks after Thanksgiving. If you're interested perhaps in being part of going for two, three days to be on the ground um, and show support, please let me know. Um, as we get some information, some details, uh, we're going to be holding that forward. Um, I wish everyone a good day. Um, we should continue to dive in and to do whatever we can to support the people of Israel to bring back the hostages, to make sure that everyone knows that we stand with our brothers and sisters across the ocean. 
Uh, have a good day, everyone.